Good afternoon. Here is the news afternoon. First, the highlights. Lagos State Government opens participatory window for stakeholders on Lagos Island Model City Plan. Vice President Kashim Shatima reassures Nigerians of positive outcome of economic reforms. And in about 35 people die. Dozens injured as snowfall, heavy rains hit remote areas of Pakistan. And then in sports, Nigeria Cricket Federation tips women national team for victory at African Games in Ghana, despite second place finish in Invitational Tournament. And now the details, I am Mike James. The Lagos State Government will on Thursday, 7th March 2024, hold the final stakeholders engagement on the Lagos Island Model City Plan. Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, Uluinka Ulumidi, said the stakeholders meeting has presented another opportunity for people's participation in the ongoing preparation of the planning document. Ulumidi said the proposed stakeholders meeting, which would be the final stage in the series of stakeholders' input, into the evolving document was aimed at developing an inclusive Lagos Island model CT plan that would address the aspirations of all Lagosians. He added that since the inauguration of the technical committee in August 2021, the preparation of the plan had witnessed a bottom-up approach, including the initial engagement with benefiting communities and a public display of the final draft of the plan at four different centers across the plan area. Olimide well, explained that the goal of the Lagos Island Model City Plan is to harness the special characteristics of the area for the sustainable future growth and socio-economic development of Lagos as the preferred investment destination in sub-Saharan Africa. In a bid to curb and tackle the unscrupulous activities of land grabbers in the state, Lagos State Government, through the Lagos State Special Task Force on Land Grabbers, has organized stakeholders' meeting with the theme Safeguarding Possessory Rights and Lands, the role of Lagos State Special Task Force on Land Grabbers. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Lawal Pedro, in his address at the event, noted that the rise in cases of land grabbing is an issue of great concern to the state's government. Pedro said the purpose of organizing the stakeholders' meeting is to foster open dialogue, share information, experiences, and collectively identify solutions to the problems inherent in the activities of land grabbers. While emphasizing that the law on land grabbing that was enacted in 2016 still stands, Regardless of one's status in society, Pedro explains how the provisions of the Lagos State Property Protection Law 2016, and in particular Section 2, Subsection 1 of the law, which prohibits the use of force or self-help by anyone to take over any landed property or engaging in any act inconsistent with the proprietary right of the owner of any landed property in Lagos. The Minister of State for the Federal Capital Territory, Maria Mahmoud, has described the looting of a warehouse in the area as a criminal act. Maria, who expressed her disappointment and concern about the extent of the damage during the visit to the facility, said the act goes beyond hunger. She explained that the looters took away all the grains and food items and even damaged the roofs and fences. The minister maintained that the perpetrators would face the consequences of their actions, noting that a police post would be established in all government warehouses across the territory. It's been very cold that two lumps on Sunday ransacked a warehouse in Guagua Tasha, stealing food items. And now to the rest of the stories. Vice President Kashim Shatima says President Bola Tinubu's administration's reforms were aimed at fortifying Nigeria's economy for growth and for the future benefit of all citizens. Shatima stated this in Gombe while launching the Outsource to Nigeria initiative in the state. According to Shatima, the present administration's decisions 
though difficult, are being taken in the best interest of Nigeria's economic prosperity and the challenges being experienced as a result of the reforms were short term. Shatima said the outsource to Nigeria initiative symbolizes a pivotal collaboration between the public and private sectors. He added that the partnership is aimed at creating millions of job opportunities and propelling Nigeria's business process outsourcing and IT-enabled services sector into unprecedented growth. The National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, and the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, SMEDAN, have signed a memorandum of understanding for the digitization of over 40 million businesses in the country. Director General of NITDA, Kashifu Inua, said the move would drive growth and sustainability. He said the SMEs are the engine room of the economy, calling for the creation of a database of the SMEs in the country to put an end to the conflicting figures being churned out. Inua said the strategic partnership was part of efforts towards the realization of President Bulat Tinubu's agenda of diversifying Nigeria's economy by enhancing productivity through technological innovation. He explained that through technology, SMEs would have access to funding, mentorship, and other forms of support to help them thrive and succeed. And in some foreign news, at least 35 people have died, with dozens more injured as freezing rain and unexpected snowfall hit remote areas of Pakistan. Disaster management authorities say 22 children were among the fatalities many of whom were crushed in the landslides that buried their homes. The extreme weather hit Pakistan's northern and western regions, clogging roads and damaging hundreds of houses. Experts are surprised by the snow, as Pakistan is typically humid in March. And over to sports news, despite a second-place finish at the fifth edition of the Nigeria Cricket Federation NCF Women T20 Invitational Tournament in Lagos, President of the Federation, Uya Pata, believes the women national team, female Yellow Greens, are equipped to do well at the forthcoming African Games in Accra. Tanzania women's cricket team beat the Sierra Leonean women's team by a whipping 92 runs in the last match of the event at the Tafabaliwa Cricket Oval in Lagos to establish supremacy and finally seal their victory at the tournament. Akpata acknowledged that the event this year took a different turn by having a higher-ranked team join in Nigeria and Rwanda in the event, but he believes the development made all the teams better. Nigeria, the defending champion of the event, had to settle for a second place after defeating AK rival Rwanda to a 20-round victory in the last match of the event. And that was our news at 12. But just before we go, remember... Speed thrills but kills. Please avoid excessive speed. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. X, Family Twitter, Traffic Radio 961, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Watch us live on Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On YouTube, subscribe and watch all our previous programs and news on our channel. Traffic Radio 961. Did you know that the Songulu administration issued 54 workspace vouchers under the workspace voucher program, which targets early stage startups? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website and end the news. Here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government will on Thursday, 7th March 2024, hold the final stakeholders' engagement on the Lagos Island Model City Plan. Vice President Kashim Shatima said President Bola Tinubu's administration's reforms were aimed at fortifying Nigeria's economy for growth and for the future benefit of all citizens. We also told you that at least 35 people have died, with dozens more injured as freezing rain and unexpected snowfall hit remote areas of Pakistan. 
And then in sports, despite a second-place finish at the fifth edition of the Nigeria Cricket Federation NCF Women T20 Invitational Tournament in Lagos, President of the Federation Uya Pata believes the women national team, female yellow greens, are equipped to do well at the forthcoming African Games in Accra. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to Lagos Traffic Radio on lagosstates.gov.ng. That ends the news broadcast. It was compiled by Abiola Fagbalagun. A very big thank you for listening. Lagos, a beautiful afternoon. My name is Mike James. And Micah Arocha will be here for lunchtime Waka. Stay here and have yourself a wonderful time.